Make sure you are talking to him. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Let nothing distract you now.
your left and to your right and welcome somebody to God's presence and be gloriously seated. We chant in the Holy Ghost ah, ah, we press in the Holy Ghost ah, We pray in the Holy Ghost ah, ah, We dance in the Holy Ghost ah, ah, We chant in the Holy Ghost ah, In the Holy Ghost, Amen. 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 Please, you are welcome to God's presence. I congratulate everybody that God has gathered through His mercy today. The visitation of God has started in our lives. While we enthroned Him and called Him all of those lofty names, the same dimensions of him that we were praising, that dimension saturated our body. As you called God Almighty, every high thing that exalted itself around your life all this while, there is something that is now mightier than the mighty. That Almighty you called him is a dimension of him that you have experienced. I want to draw your attention to the modus operandi of God. It is captured, you know, with that little narrative of the pool of Bethesda. The Bible made it clear that in a time when the word of God became scarce, a, 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 a period of almost 400 years of prophetic silence, no prophet was declaring, thus says the Lord, and that the word of God was scarce in the land. That in such a time, God preserved the memory of his, himself as a great healer by a pool. So that although there are no men communicating the counsel and the mercy of God to the people who are bedridden by the affront of darkness that there is an inanimate thing not living that can still show that God is a healer. So although men are not available, there was a pool that still maintained the anointing of healing and the pool operated with that healing through a mechanism and it is that mechanism I want us to contemplate on briefly. The Bible said it's not every time you enter that you are healed people consider the pool carefully they wait for a season where an angel of the Lord will trouble the water. And so all kinds of people with all kinds of ailments, all kinds of diseases, they lay them by the side of the pool. So that when the water is troubled, you will not need to do much before you enter. And so the closer you are to the water, the best your chance to assess it. Mind you, the way it worked was that the first person to enter 
is the one that will receive his healing. So, if 500 people enter after the first person, that number is inconsequential. It is the person who was able to discern quickly. So, they left a condition to touch it. That it is not available for anybody who stroll by at his own time. Maybe you hear that the thing has started. Then you say, the food is almost done. Let me just round up quickly. Hey, they say, you cannot achieve it in your own time. You are the one to partner with the timing of the immortals. Hey. The, the whole thing happening there is a typology of what happens every time we come into the hallowed gathering of God and the word of God is stirred. I remember the Bible says the washing of the water by the word. Remember? Amen. The word of God is the water that is now being stirred. All kinds of affront of darkness the perfecting of Satan on our destiny is the, is the infirmities that men have when they come near the word. The fact that you have come near the word has not given you access until it is stirred. Oh. Just because the Bible is open does not mean the word of God has been open. Ah, it, it will take an angel to stir the waters. And as God will have it, he, the, the word angels mean messenger. That, that, that's all it means. When the messenger over any house comes under the influence of the Holy Ghost and begins to declare what is the accurate counsel of God for that time, as he is speaking, he is troubling the water. He is troubling the water. This is why men who have spiritual understanding, they are not in the, they are not in the crowd. Their understanding have removed them from the rat race. That understanding have separated them from the struggle. So you can enter an akazo and even before I come up, you have gotten your, your word for that day. You have been healed. You have been delivered. You have been blessed. Favor have robbed you. You know why? You know that I'm looking for the water to be stirred. You are not waiting for a man. Do you know how many angels have come to trouble water here today? An angel means a messenger. Hey! When they started first worship, that person, eh? There is something about God that is buried on their inside. When they began to worship, their spirit began to trouble that dimension of visitation. Anybody who was wise, this is why church remains, you know, very, very casual until they say, the man of God is coming. Everybody now stand up. Hey, most times it grieves my heart when I see that the expectation as regarding visitation is only tied to one segment, one. And there were many ladders of encounters many 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 angels have come to trouble water before that one person but it might interest you to know that many of the times it's not even the minister of the word that will bless you ah, 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 align your spirit now can you align your spirits like Jacob ah, 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 ah. I will not let you go until you bless me I know you are here and I will not go Go and search for something now. 
go and look for there is a river flowing on your inside until it is troubled until it is dead you will not know what the rema word of god for the season is somebody will receive a measure of faith because the word of god will empower you it will give you unnecessary unusual clarity and you will know that this is my own this is my own enter the pool when you sense the water is troubled how do you enter I have laid out the criteria and the procedure that was clearly spelled out in the old covenant because they want to show you the protocol of visitation that a man has his own role to play your role is to enter as soon as you disarm the movement Ah, if it's as touching the deposit of the word it is not about competition in this one in the old covenant because men will literally see the water troubled it only means that there is a portion of time you encounter. See, it means encounters have lifespan. Huh? Encounters have time frame. That Jesus is calling you today, he will not be calling you forever. There is a season Satan will buffet you until you miss it. When you miss that window, even Satan is not interested in you again. Because Satan is only interested in what God is interested in. When God's focus shifts from you, Satan too is no longer interested. So our visitation is on seasonal basis, on time basis. That is what it meant by the person who can enter first. It means there is a sense of urgency as touching when God moves. If God moves and you don't move, you will lose. Ah, in the Exodus, the pillar of fire must move before Israel will take any step. If you take a step before the pillar, you are exposed. And if the pillar move and you don't move, you are exposed. So your safety is in replicating any step the pillar does or the cloud does. The visitation is tied first to the movement of the heavens, second to the response of the earth. If heaven moves and earth does not respond, you will miss God's visitation. And God has been moving many times. There's no response from man. Many times God has moved. No response. Tonight I'm trying to draw your attention that you can find God anywhere. Sometimes it's just one song, the Holy Ghost quickening in your heart. A song begins to bless you unusually in a season. Song that you have in your phone all these years and you have not been staying with it. One day as you played, it was like, it was like a ladder between heaven and earth. That was a season of visitation. What you are supposed to do was to go back, retreat into the conclave of your spirit to go and find what scripture is the emphasis in my soul for now. That scripture is what was being troubled. That is what God wants to use because God cannot move without his word. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. I will tell you why the word was God. The Bible says there are three that bear witness in the heaven. Huh? One, the Father. Two, the Spirit. And the word. The word. This is why in the beginning was that person. The, he, he no longer operates in that capacity now because the word has entered time and became flesh. And that flesh, he became, he took that flesh back to heaven. So he no longer operates as the word. He's, it was worse. That was why his former pre-incarnated identity was the word. But now that word had become flesh so that he can teach other men how to turn word into flesh. So that if, if anything is speaking in your inside, you can press it until it becomes your own. Okay, so that when we gather in heaven later, they will see many things that you, you press including the infirmity that came with the DNA of your, your, your ancestors. Eh? You can use something to press it out. 
When you return, they will say, Kai, this thing, you corrected it through the word. It's the word that did this for you. In verse 2, it says, in the, no. in the beginning was the word, verse 1, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, it says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Please say all things. The word, oh, the word, the word made all things. And so if the word, if there is need to make any other thing, you must go and make reference to what makes all things. Hey. Make any mistake to make anything outside the word, you will know why Satan have access to certain things. Because anything that the foundation is not built from the word, Satan can shake it. And without him was not anything made that was made. Can I share something with you? Even Satan was made from the word. This is why of all the things Satan will challenge in your life, he will not challenge that word. If you, if you hold on to it. We don't know how God visits us. He will trouble the word inside you. Some of you, is something you heard and there was no faith to believe it. Maybe four years ago, the day they were preaching it, you were convinced that they were talking to other people, not you. And the Holy Ghost archived it, kept it in one corner somewhere. And in the day that matters, he will replay that content. Suddenly, ah, something will start telling you that, but do you know that God actually can make you a blessing to other people? You will not be the one borrowing. You will be the one giving. Your mind will start contemplating on something like that. It is the word that wants to recreate a man. Although he is beggarly, although he is full of all kinds of, you know, uh, lack and scarcity. But if your situation wants to change, God begins to provoke a thought based on the word. The word in you begins to react. How many times does uh, the spirit stir the waters in your soul? One scripture will begin to make unnecessary sense. You, you ignore it. Ignore it. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4. Verse 4 is my emphasis. Everybody, let's read verse 4 together. At the count of three. One, two, three, go. In him was life. Say life. life. Please say life again. Life. Say the life of God is in God. <laughs> but that life will enter man as light. Huh? Is it in the scripture? In him was life. But that life is the light of what? So it means that there is life in God. But God is... Ah, God. I don't want to say God dwells in eternity. He inhabits eternity. Eternity finds expression inside him. So since God inhabits eternity and he is in love with a creature that is inside time, so there is, there is now a zone difference challenge. The way you have a spouse outside the country and your time zones have some variance that you will need to now find a system to communicate and then to set out system to reach out no matter how interested somebody is to help you what they do is that they send you whatever resource they have from there huh? and there must be a system to convert the currency of that nation to your own nation so that you can you can touch it eternity runs on a different rule and so God cannot carry the bounties of eternity and give to man directly. There is a need for some conversion process. So in eternity, life is substance of its own. But if life wants to enter into time to reach man, they have to convert it into light. So when they said, in him was life, but that life is transferred to men as light. Please say life is light. Maybe we'll put it better. God's life is light. Let me show you something very quickly. Please pray for one minute. Holy Ghost, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 Romans chapter 6 verse 23 
Everybody, if you are a Christian, you fear God. Let's read together at the count of three. One, two, three, go. You know, I think it's last week I began to do a little teaching on wages. What it means. It means the reward. It means debts actually have no place or no time where it ever did anything illegally. Death was on its own until sin is activated. Death is only a wage. The wages of sin is death. Anywhere sin is introduced, death becomes the outcome of a system that have endorsed sin. If sin is brought into a system, death is an atmosphere that comes into that system. If there is no sin, this is what it meant by the law of sin and death. Death follows sin. In like manner, righteousness bequits life. So there is also the law of life huh? and righteousness and life in Christ Jesus. Now that righteousness which man is not capable of attaining, it is that righteousness that God in his sovereign mercy played all the role for man and bequitted it to man. So that your salvation is God who has done it for you but the reward of all of those things God has done comes to man. Please listen, follow me carefully. If life from God, and mind you, anything God gives you, he gives you as life. But that life will come as... Huh? Good. We're, we're following. So, let's say you, you need to say, Oh God, my neighbors, they are, they are raining me. Oh, they are insulting me. Democracy is too much. I cannot bear it. And, and Lord, it's, it's not for myself I'm asking. So that your name will not be put to shame. You know how people pray. Lord, visit me. Open my womb. When God wants to give you a baby, the baby will come as life. And that life will enter you as light. There is no other way you can receive anything from God except through light. Tell the person by your side, even your husband is light. <laughs> hey! I know, I know you, you are, you are busy looking for a phone number. Ah, your husband is light, it's light. There's something that will be him and enter. It is that day you received it. There's no way God can transfer anything. There's, there is difference in the realms. Eternity cannot communicate with time unless it has converted its bounty into light. So the, the totality of God's bounty to man will be transferred as light. In him was life, but that life is the light of man. Huh. Uh, you know why I'm telling you to say these things? Because I want it to, I, I want it to enter too much. See, the only thing God owes me is light. Uh, I know you will not say it loud because <laughs> you see that money you are asking for eh? money will come as light it's not a prayer somebody said amen there let me put it better I'm saying that every good thing God can give to a man will be converted into light then it will enter the man then it will uh, there is a spirit in man Job chapter 8 verse 32 there is, there is a spirit in man the inspiration of the almighty spirit will give them understanding so when the light of God is cast upon you your spirit have the capacity to interpret what God has done then suddenly that transfer that was made from another, another dimension another realm even if you are crying and say Lord give me prosperity prosperity will come as light there is nothing God gives you that will not arrive this time as light so please say life life is light say this again the life of God is my light now listen if God is transferring life to us huh? and his, his intent is to measure life into us and then whenever a man contravenes the law of God huh? please follow me follow me what is the opposite of life? Are, are we together? If man contravenes the law of God, then they say the result, eh? the result of breaking that law or disobeying is that 
the opposite of what God wants to do huh, is what will happen. I want to show you something. It means that anytime God says, do this, and every instruction of God comes with a blessing. Every instruction of God is the word of God, and the word of God is light. And every time light enters anywhere, there is life as a reward for receiving light. The instructions of God, once, once it is disobeyed, instead of the way it works in the physical world that you have missed that blessing, the way the reaction will work is that it is the opposite of what that word came for that you broke. It is the opposite of that word that will immediately start happening. So whether you obey or you disobey, there will be a performance. Something will happen. Obedience will do something. Disobedience will also do something. It is not like the reward of man where a man sends something to you and then you, you, you falter in your terms of covenant. Then the man withdraws it back. In this case, it is not like the thing is being withdrawn. It is that the, the new economy that is created will now express itself in the opposite of what that particular blessing was meant for. Now see, the wages of sin, that's of violating God's law, is death. So it means anytime you fall, anytime you sin, you invite death into your space. If the sin is as touching your dealing with your fellow men as regarding business or money or one deal or one contract, that area of your life that accommodated that violation of God's law is the first area that death will visit. Then it will begin to spread its government across other areas. So you will find out first that if you violate God's own tenants of you know, money, how you deal with it, how you make your gain, the first area of your life that will be visited by death is money. You will just find out that things don't stay in your hand. You will find out that your, your pocket is leaking. And guess what? You know, I already told you that God gives us everything as light. Please come, sir. Let me show you something. Brother, come. For the sake of this, come. For the sake of this illustration, this brother right here, everybody look at him carefully. Stand, stand, listen to him. This is a faithful child of God. He has kept the word of the Lord. He has kept it from his youth. And he is a very, very confident person that he has tried. Then he begins to pray and ask God for a performance as regarding anything. For the sake of this illustration, that's why I've repeated it twice. Assume that I am God in this illustration. And then I want to give him what he's asking for. But I told you we are not in the same realm. And so nothing can live here directly to him. Anything that lives here must be converted into a form that he can re relate with. And so everything must become light. Because the life of God will enter men as... If God wants to give you a car, he will give you life. It's life that will bring the car. There is a kind of life that is car. If God wants to give you money, there is a kind of life that is financial increase. Everything God gives is a kind of life. And now, in this illustration, God is now transferring light to him. Remember what I told you what life is. Life will live eternity as life, but when it's about to enter time, it will be converted into what? As light began to come. Listen. Because of this brother sinned, the moment he sinned, this is why nearest to your visitation be very careful because that's when Satan comes. All these years that nothing is happening, the devil will leave you, you are praying. But when he senses that heaven has moved on your behalf, he begins to trouble you so that in the last hour, you will violate a law that will deprive Oh, Now, I have released the light. The light is coming. I hope you guys can imagine what I want to describe. Imagine we shine a torchlight now. What you will see is a ray of light, right? Imagine a ray of light traveling from a realm, going to this brother to go and enter him so that he can empower him as life. And then he violated the law of God. And by every sin, I, I told you, you invite what? The wages of sin is. As he violated the law, he did not, he, he, he thought that he, he just disobeyed. He didn't know that he invited something. Every sin is an invitation letter to death. So, death. Stand as he stood. 
while the light was traveling, coming to him, he violated the law. Another opaque object. This is what, remember what was traveling. It is life. But life will be transferred as light. As light is coming, these spirits know that it's not light. It's actually life that they, they converted. And this spirit is called death. It is antagonizing life. The opposite of life. It is like saying plus one, minus one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every time the devil comes and provokes you, one hour to your visitation, he wants something to come and stand and resist that light. And when the light comes, the spirit standing here knows that this particular thing coming is life and is the spirit of death. And anywhere he finds his, uh, his government, he, re he resists life, he resists growth, he resists progress. Let me share something very quickly. God will not be building something with a, with a foundation that also has the signature of a rebellious government. God will never go and cooperate with Satan for two of them to go and walk on the same side. The moment this brother yield to temptation, what he has done is that he has yielded himself as a servant to who he has obeyed. And so he no longer, he no longer is a servant of God for that particular time based on that sin. And the sin has brought death. And death has resisted life that was coming as light. As death resists it, Satan knows that you will go and confess tomorrow. He knows that you will say you are sorry. He knows you already love God. But he just wants you to be up today, down, not tomorrow, down at the season of your visitation. Then you can be in church for 20 years and you cannot see the blessing of God. Because every day the blessing comes close, death comes and resist it. If you are with me to this level, say amen. amen. Now look at what I'm, I'm doing. See the ray of light. Imagine a ray of light coming like this. And then a ray of light was obstructed by an opaque element. Opaque means it's not transparent. It can't pass through it. What will be the experience of this brother at the back of this spirit of death? Huh? Please say it as loud as you can. Brethren, this matter we talk about, this is the origin of darkness. This is where it came from. Darkness, another name for darkness is the shadow of death. And you don't have shadow until there was a light, until an element resists light. It is the resistance of light that creates the shadow. Hey, there was no time where God created darkness into creation. Darkness comes with death. You start praying. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Suddenly Satan say, We know. Give him time. Give him, give him another five minutes. Ah, then the heavens is rent. God say, I will move in his direction. They start broadcasting life. When you reach this zone, it becomes light. This is what addiction means in your life. Addiction means there is a programming that knows when your moment of visitation come and they, 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 they compel you to go and bend law in your moment of visitation. Hey, anybody who is under the yoke of addiction, I can tell you one truth, you know, with all level of clarity. You, would, you will not be able to tell why the spirit chooses the moment where he demands that go and honor this altar now. Because the, the spirit is more aware of motions in the spirit. They have seen that hey, 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 hey. The long-awaited prophecy is about to happen. <laughs> you will be in church for 50 years. And then at old age, you will hate God. And then when God comes to justify himself, he will say, my hands are not too short to deliver. Neither are my ears dull to hear. He says, but your iniquity have separated me and you. Have you read that scripture? See what separated you here. It is sin that brought death to resist light. And it was not light death resisted. It resisted life. So you can pray any prayer point. I'm speaking to somebody today who have found the secret. Hey, you're on a matter. Praying, praying, praying. 
suddenly a victory note how many people have received prophecies about God said he will do it and then you wait, wait, it didn't come to pass go and check, I am showing you the, the, the way they have been running the matter it is, it is this business that they are on they wait until moment of appearing, then all hell break loose on you, the pressure becomes too much hey, and it's only the one who overcomes and receives the reward two minutes to your breakthrough somebody will just show up like this and say You know, you know anything I hear? I hear say that you talk about you. Say, Kai, it will be better I don't tell you. Then you say, talk, just talk. I will not be angry. In the realm of the spirit, why you are asking for what you are asking is more important than what you are asking. The reason for what you want is more important than what you want. So you have been telling God, bless me. Bless me, oh God, bless me. And every time God check your heart, He is seeing that you actually want to live well. You don't want to, because of lack, enter sin. And you also want to advance and pursue your purpose in life. And God says, it's a good cause to empower Him. God sends empowerment. Before empowerment reaches you, somebody comes and, and, and rain you and say, Hi, oh boy, do me pack, pack from this house because I, me, I, me, I need extra space. Hey, then something comes say, so now you the arena. What they are looking for is to go and change the motive, the reason why you want to be blessed. I'm speaking to many people here who are sitting down who subconsciously, because it's not intentional, subconsciously, your need for success, there are too many points you want to prove. There are people who have, who have looked down on you, people who have undermined you at different junctions of your life. And Satan have used that as a basis to discredit you from touching life. Hey. How many people abandoned their marital settlement? It was almost there. The foundation of God standed sure. Having this seal, let anyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. If you are naming his name and you want to see his visitation, they say, depart from iniquity. One month to your visitation, five brothers will show up from nowhere, begin to ask you out. Hey, you don't know that the scale, the scale of justice is being weighed. They are looking at you. Then you now, in your mind, you now say, well, it's not like it is a sin. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm not married. Then you now say yes to this one and say this one. Let's just let's just see where it goes to. Hey, what you have done is that Satan has made you a double-minded man. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Such a man should not expect anything from the Lord. That is what scripture said. Hey, so one minute to visitation, Satan can draw your, your attention. You'll be here. You'll be here. You know what faith is? Faith is God alone. I know I'm not talking to everybody today. But the people I'm not talking to, I'll, you will go and look for this message a few years to come. You will listen to it. This is the problem. It says, ask and it shall be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be opened. It says, whosoever asketh, receive it. Can I ask you a question? Why is God re-emphasizing this thing? That actually anybody who asks is receiving. Why are we not getting it at the other end? God is saying I have been given. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Can Satan give a baby or a life to a human being? Let's talk now. Okay, since you are so spiritual... And your response is that Satan has no capacity to give children. What happens to those who go and strike covenant with marine spirits and then they receive a visitation on account of those covenants? How do you justify that? The only way to explain this matter is that all good and perfect gift comes from God. 
But the fact that it comes from God, there are custom officers whose, whose own purpose is to make sure that, hey, you don't know what Satan told Jesus. He says, bow before me and I will give you all this for it was given to me. That thing he said was given to him, you know he stole it back. He seized it. You, Satan cannot receive anything from God. God will never give Satan anything. God can never bless Satan. God will bless his son. Satan will collect it from God's son. That's where Satan's wealth is. The unfaithfulness of the loyalists of the kingdom. Every time you fall, that thing that was coming for you, they, they, hey, God gave, God gave Adam dominion over the realm. Satan knows that he cannot collect dominion from God, so he waited near the man that will collect it. The moment it landed in the hand of the man, I chucked it. Lord, give me children. And God says, I will give you two mighty weapons. This is why God don't listen to some people's prayer again. Because you have become a channel of wasted. Because of you, Satan has touched many heavy things. God will send and Satan will, will mortgage in the last minute. Uh, you, you don't know how to war with prophecy. Please tell yourself, I refuse to fall. I refuse to compromise. He that endures. He that endures. There is, there is a prerequisite level of endurance necessary to touch the crown of reward. Everything God sends have a particular gestation period. It is that time of waiting that Satan comes and plays with. I have not even touched our teaching today. Obviously, obviously, we are not doing it. Second Corinthians chapter 4, very quickly. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Everybody, let's read together, is projected. One, two, go. But if our gospel, come on, please, please, let's read together as loud as we can. One, two, go. Gospel is hid. It is hid to them that are what? Come on, say that are lost. Let me tell you what, okay, let's, let's finish it, verse 4. Let's go, one, two, go. In whom the God of this world had what? You see what the God of this world does? He, he creates a blinding so that the light of the glorious gospel cannot shine on them. I told you, even salvation comes as light. Everything God gives you is light. And when Satan wants to create an embargo to keep you perpetually in sin, he puts a veil that blinds you from assessing the light of the glorious gospel. What business do you have arguing with men? When the challenge is that is blindness, you know what a blind man sees? Darkness, dark. Everything he sees is dark. His his eye cannot relate with light. I'm heading somewhere with this. There's no time. By now we're supposed to be praying, but permit me to do something quickly so that we just continue next week. Man has fallen. Man has sinned. And so death has found expression first on man and secondly on everything that was under him. So even creation too has been subjected to the corruption of death. So the Bible says the earnest expectation of creatures, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God because they too, our salvation, our deliverance will extend to them. If you are with me, say Amen. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, very quickly. The Bible says there that, um, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. This is, this is because all the foundations are out of course. If you are with me, say amen. 
In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, the scripture says, Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. This is how they were describing the world. First, I told you all the foundations are out of course. Second, I told you the whole world lies in wickedness. Huh? Now I'm telling you that the Bible is describing our walk in the world as that we are sheep that were sent among wolves. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2, the Bible says, For behold, the darkness will cover the earth. What did I say is the origin of darkness? Huh? No, that was not what I said. It's the shadow of death. Sin, sin is a shadow. Sorry. Huh? Darkness is a shadow. And that shadow is because God has an agenda. It is that agenda that was resisted that produced that shadow. Anywhere you see darkness, know that there was something of God that was stopped. That darkness you are seeing there is a proof that there is a program of God that is being fought by this, this, this shade you are seeing here is for resisting a, a mission of God. Anywhere there is darkness, know that there is light that is being obstructed. Because darkness is a shadow of death. It's only death that comes to stand because what he comes to stop is life. And that life actually comes as light. So he resists that life and then the effect of him resisting life because he comes on legal ground because you were the one that invited him. That, that resisting the light leaves a shadow behind him. In Psalm 23 verse 4 the Bible says yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Which valley? Pay attention. Listen to me. Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, Behold, the darkness will cover the earth. Everywhere will be soaked with that darkness. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Though I walk through. Say walk through. Come on, say like you mean it. Walk through. It means that that valley of the shadow of death is a necessary path you must go through on your journey in life. And he says, Though I am going through it, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If you are with me, thus far say amen. amen. On account that man has fallen and death has been brought into creation, the environment of death, the culture of death has casted a shadow on creation. So what it means is that that particular darkness, Isaiah 60 verse 2 said, there is a darkness that comes to cover the earth. That one is not for human being. It's not because of your own sin. It is territorial tilting towards iniquity. A culture that supports iniquity. That is that kind of darkness. There is no human being that will open his eye into existence that will not be restricted, that will not be waged, that will not be fought by that territorial element of darkness. Maybe your own, in your own territory, it might be lost that is at, at, at rampage. The spirit of lust is just riding over people's destiny. That is a, a kind of darkness that you must walk through. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Ah. And so in every territory, there is a particular infirmity that is the predominant scene in that space. And if you find the scene that reigns in your own space, that is the darkness you must go through if you must ascend the mountains of the Lord. Who shall ascend the mountains of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his holy mountains? The Bible says, he that has a clean hands and a pure heart. How can you climb the mountain if you have not gone through the valley? And every territory have a principality. And every principality is, is, is broadcasting a particular flavor of sin. And so the darkness in your own territory is the darkness you must walk through. So he says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hey, but it's not everybody that will go through. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the Bible says, I was taken by the spirits and I was brought into the valley. Which valley? The same one that David was speaking about. That one that has the capacity to live a territorial sin and a territorial infirmity. A particular challenge that everybody in the territory, if you are not doing it, you are the strange one. Ezekiel said, the Lord took him and brought him and kept him in a valley 
that was full of dry bones. Hey, so many, many people will be walking and then they, they will reach one point where there will be a particular infirmity that will catch them. The trophy is on the peak of the mountain. Only those who can walk through the darkness and climb it. It is overcomers that receive the crown. But there is a canopy, a cloud, an atmosphere of darkness that surrounds the valley. But you must go through the valley to climb the mountain. The mountain is, a, is, is, is the reward. But the valley is the process. The valley is the system you have entered. The world is already evil, so you cannot change it. The whole world lies in wickedness. The only thing you can do now, and mind you, I cannot... I cannot go beyond this because we need to pray. When you are there, when you are there, when you are there, the trophy is on, is on Zion. And the discourse is very simple. They say, all who are thirsty, come and drink. All who are hungry, come and eat. As we journey, as we begin to sojourn, to touch the horn of our ordination, many people will cast out on the way. And any place you fall, death will consolidate its process on you. This is why when they went to that valley, they found a lot of casualty. Some of you lost, lost is on your case. Lost is holding your neck and, and you are struggling, you are dragging your feet, you are trying to climb the mountain and lost is holding. The day you say, but you know before I would, what you have done is that you, you, you have decided to lie down. You, you don't, even if you fall, be crawling, be crawling. Refuse to stop. Hey, that point when you come to, where you now say, everybody is doing it in fact. Uh -uh, is that day that they have caught you on the ground. You begin to become dry bones. Many spirits will enter you. They will stab you. Ah, with that pain, continue to press. Continue to drag yourself. If it means to roll, roll. But by all means, be moving. Don't rest in that valley. If you stay there, you will become dry. Higher layers of death will begin to find expression on your members. You will not know. You will not know. It will start first as a struggle to pray. A time will come you cannot even pray again. It is at that time death has found full cause. At that time, the Lord will have to send the prophet and say, Son of man, can these bones live again? He says, I was carried by the Spirit and he brought me to a valley, the valley full of dry bones. What has happened? What has happened to mighty weapons of God? What has happened to deliverers of families? Many of them have become dry bones. And they are wasting in the valley. Wasting away. The word of the Lord comes tonight. Ka 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 
this light that I have in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my heart only comes alive every time There's these lights in my heart. In spite of the darkness, I saw me. And this light, deep down in my soul, only comes alive every time I move. Together. Maybe we'll teach them that song. Light. There's this light in my heart. In spite of the darkness that surrounds me. And this light deep down in my soul only comes alive every time.
Lord is setting people free now. Chains are falling. Dry bones, dry bones are connecting. The Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God is saving people now. You are going to personalize it. I would arise, shine, my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Go ahead and chant that now. I will arise, shine, my light has come. For the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we would continue next week. Time is not on our side. Jarani a Yesu na Nzoma kamarbeta Jarani a Yesu na run forward quickly. Let's not let's not trouble the air. All titles run forward, run forward quickly. In Zoma Kamarda Yarani
Lord Jesus, we can't help ourselves. We can't help ourselves. We can't help ourselves. We can't. We can't help ourselves. We can't help ourselves. Spirit leads me when my trust is without borders. When we walk upon the waters, wherever you would call me, take me deep, but and my feet could ever wander, and my faith. Presence of Spirit leads me. Let me walk wherever. Take me deeper. Thank you, Father. Thank you for accepting us in your Son, Jesus. Now we pray that you accept our substances. Let it be a sweet-smelling savour to you. Use it, O God, for your cause alone. Let it advance your kingdom and let it expand even the rich in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please, you can cast your offerings and your tithes. And let's take some announcements very quickly. We are encouraged because of the cashless, because of the cashless um, operations that you know that have been switched in. Please, we are encouraged to give using our account details. It's important that we do so. Please, God bless you as you comply. Just a quick reminder. I know I have not announced it for a couple of time now, but our building project is very much on. So please, Project Sanctuary is actively on. Make sure you key into that project. Make sure you make yourself a very, very, you know, pivotal part of that project. We are, we are, we are, we are building, we are going to build a citadel of worship, a place that befits God's presence. So um, please, Please, um, for those following us online, if you are blessed and you are being blessed by this ministry, it's a good time to rally our resources together and let's build the house of the Lord. And also, um, by the grace of God, our wonderful, beautiful and elegant head of worship team, Sister Sarah Joseph, please come. Is she not just amazing? Amen. The, uh, listen, listen. This is the part that ladies like the most. The anko. Ko? The uniform. Another word for uniform is anko. Ko? The uniform and the anko for Sister Sarah's wedding is out. Amen. Listen, listen. Please, um, Sister Grace, where are you? Where is Sister Grace? Please, uh, the lady waving her hand by that door there, you meet her after the meeting and then get, um, you know, uh, the anko. Get, get for, uh, subsequent details so that we all show up colorful to celebrate our sister who has been a beam of light in this era of darkness. Please celebrate her. By the grace of God, a quick reminder, our crusade uh, for Narayi invasion is still very much ongoing. Preparations are on ground. Last week I announced that if you have any shoe or clothes or anything you are not using again, or you are using and you feel led to give it out.
uh, our arms are still open to collect all of those relief and welfare materials so that we can communicate it to the less privileged when we get there. We're also going to do a medical outreach in that community. So please, uh, let's all work with these plans in mind. The date for the crusade is 25th and 26th of March. So please clear your schedules and let's all converge. And if you are around that space, please, you will help us as we make further arrangements as regarding, you know, the cause of that crusade. Um, by the grace of God, on Sunday, I would be with my brother and covenant, in fact, my friend and covenant brother, Minister Caleb David. We would be, amen. Please leave, leave, leave your heart. We would be bringing God's counsel accurately to that space. The venue is at one Sunday, um, um, Salem Academy, um, by, after Yisheng, after that bend. You will see the school, Salem Academy. We are using the hall of that school. It's a noble place for gathering, and it's in the heart of the city. And, and God has given a mandate to his servant, and we are all going to converge there to have such a memorable, you know, outpour of the Spirit. So please, all roads lead to Salem Assembly on, on, on Sunday. It's going to be marvelous. Please make, make our time clear your schedules as God will be visiting us mightily. Uh, who is excited to be in God's presence? <laughs> If God has blessed you, if something has been stirred, can you shout Amen? Amen. amen. Please tell the person by your side, Satan came too late. Say, Satan came too late. Satan came too late. If you know you have been blessed, can you shout glory? Amen. Amen. I want to celebrate everybody for taking our time to come. Our brother has not been around for some time. Once again, it is very, very, you know, ex exciting to have him with us. Can we celebrate our very own evangelist, Emmanuel Swahu? No going back. you all.